We're back with Pono Shim, founder of Concierge Services at Ward. We had chatted earlier a bit about um, you know the Hawaiian saying that goes along with emerging with your gifts and then the stories sure. that accompany that to put it into perspective. Sure. Maybe you could share that. There's um the the theme emerge with your gifts, the Hawaiian saying is a puka aku me kaumau makana, makana your gift. Puka people know is you know, a whole. And a puka aku me kaumau makana has the has the vision of, of emerging to, to break forth. So if you can picture this, there's a lava flow. And after a lava flow, there is actually no life there. There's devastation until something occurs. Once the lehua, ohia lehua, breaks through the lava, it becomes a haven and a host for new life. And so Ipuka Aku Me Kaumama kind of gives me the picture that the lehua has broken through the lava and it's inviting life to come begin again. So that's, that's just a picture. A few years ago, I was on a uh, committee that was chairing Kamehameha School's uh, Ho'olaulea, which is an annual event, similar to what Punahou does, but this is, uh, it, it, it's more culturally sensitive to what Kamehameha is about. And on this steering committee, that became the theme. You know, normally it is about Pawahi or the children, but that year I volunteered this theme, and I, the reason why is because the lead of the um, Parent Alumni Relations was asking people for help. And when I shared this, this theme, I said, you know, I heard Merv asking for help. And what I would like this, the attitude of this committee to be would be when people do come to help, we find a way to embrace those offers and honor the help. You know, nothing is too big, nothing is too small. Everything is valuable to building the success of this event so that people can feel like they are part of the solution rather than they are a liability. Everything is valuable. We went out and started working together at, on, on this committee. And you know, it's really interesting when you work on these events, a lot of times it's, oh my gosh, let's get in and let's get out. You know, <laughs> let's get this over with, we're done, we did our job. But what happened with this committee is we started having a lot of fun. And every time there were challenges that emerged, they would say, what are we gonna do? And we, we'd go back to our theme and let that be our guide. Are people coming with their gifts? Then I think we better allow them to do that because we're going to either walk it or we're going to talk it. In other words, we let the purpose be our framework. You know, that became our parameters. And on February 17th, we decided to uh, have a donation day. And we asked our families of Kamehameha to donate either flour, sugar, shoyu, or rice. And we didn't ask for money and art. Because we, Pawahi set up this school so that it could help a lot of different people. And, and it does. You know, we have children who, who are very highly in indigent circumstances, and then we have some who are affluent. To be able to give them all opportunities, we looked at the, at the, at the donations. And you know what? Even if you're, you're on the beach, you can go and clean somebody's windows and make a couple bucks and, and be able to give a five-pound bag of flour. And so at 6 a.m., on February 17th in 2005, I was at Kamehameha's elementary school collecting flour from 6 to 7 a.m. And kids are coming off the buses from Waianae or Nanakuli and, and Kaneohe, Waimanalo. People are driving up in their cars and, and, you know, they're pulling these bags of grocery bags of flour out. And 7 o'clock the bell rang and, you know, it was hot and, and, and it was hot, fast and furious that these bags of flour were coming forward, um, bag of flour. And after the kids left for class, I was stuck there with three piles of flour. And so I started to inventory all of this, the first pile, the second pile. And when I got to the third pile and I opened the bag that was on the top, I looked inside and I began to cry. And I sat down. I had to compose myself because I was ready to start sobbing right there. Now remember what the theme was. Nothing is too big. Nothing is too small. Everything is precious. Everything is important. And in this grocery bag, there was a quart sandwich bag. And in the quart sandwich bag, there was a cup and a half of flour. And to me, that was the greatest gift. It blew my mind that I was holding so much. Others might look at that and say, somebody only gave you a cup and a half of flour. But that was what our theme was. The theme was the value of the gift because of the value of the heart. 
And when I received it, I was looking at it and I, and I took it with five things. We call it ho'okupu. It's a sacred gift. I took it with five things. Number one, I hear what you're saying. That the person who gave it to us said, I hear what you're saying. Number two, I want to believe that it's true. Number three, I don't have very much. Number four, but I'll give you everything I have. And number five, please use it wisely. I took what we call the mana'o, the spirit of those gifts, and I said, this is sacred because it was somebody giving everything. It's almost like the widow's might in the Bible. In fact, it parallels that so well. And I took it up to some of the leaders of our school, and I started sharing this gift. And the amazing thing that happened is, as I shared this gift and I saw people break down and cry and I saw their eyes get wet and their, and their eyes get red and they looked at that and I saw people start to, to nod and, and, and then ask, okay, how can we help? How can we help? And to me, that's called raising the bar. You know, we all talk about raising the bar, but somebody had raised the bar so high, which one of us is going to give everything we own to help accomplish something for our community? But here's somebody who gave everything they had. I don't know the circumstances. But the bar was raising, risen so high that everybody else could look at that and say, okay, now how are we going to step up? That, to me, was creating the opportunity for relationship because it was the mindset of invitation that allows people to participate. And what it does is it creates a community where people can prosper, people can participate, people can feel like they are part of a thriving community. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more on Greater Good Radio.